Good morning, beautiful people. So I felt really compelled to make this video today because for me personally, and I think for you as well potentially, is that this is going to feel like a huge chunk of the puzzle pie of what it means to be a human being and how to understand this human experience will kind of slot into place. And what I'm going to be focusing on specifically is the, is the subject of fear and how fear is actually um, working in our biological system and why there's always this tendency, which is what I was confused about for so long, why is there this tendency for human beings to always move towards a stressed out, highly strung, scared state? Even if they are aware that stress is not good for us, which we're all pretty much aware of, um, and even if our intentions are you know, to come out of a stressful state, but yet, for most of us, we just slip back into stress all the time, no matter what we kind of, what our intentions are. So, this is what I'm going to be sharing with you. And, you know, this really kind of clicked in when I was reading a number of books, uh, Energy Medicine, Energy Psychology, EFT, and more importantly, the biological system of the human being, and the neurological, neurological system of the human being. So... The reason that we have a tendency to be highly strung and to be stressed out simply comes down to biology and the evolutionary process. So the biology of the body is designed in order to stay alive, it's to you know, stay alive for the species. And in order to stay alive, the biological system has to be aware of immediate danger or threat of life or injury, of self, but also of family unit or tribe. So because of this, the system is going to, it's basically the system, it's worth the system being in a highly strong state in order to prevent the potential for like a tiger to come in the door um, and threaten my life. If I'm in a highly strong uh, alert state when a tiger walks in the door then I'm going to be more equipped to be able to deal with it but if I'm relaxed chilled out closed eyes um, blissed out uh, in a vulnerable crying state and a tiger walks through the door you know our chances of reacting to that is much reduced and the chance of survival is much reduced so therefore the biological system in order to survive is wired to be on a tendency towards being highly strong in order to survive. So I would say we are wired 70% of the time. We always have a tendency towards being stressed out. And I think this also links into the psychological negative bias, they call it, where the mind is constantly looking for problems in order to solve them. And again, I think that's tied into the biology and the evolutionary process where the mind is trying to create safer, better, more productive environments so that we can thrive. But the negative bias that we have in our mind and also in our biology, at this point in our human growth, is working against us. So... The world as it is now, whether you um, have realized this or not, but the conditions for humanity at this time on the planet are, has never been better. Uh, looking at uh, mortality rates, homicide rates, uh, uh, the lifespan, uh, women's rights, all that sort of stuff, the conveniences that we have in the modern world is like we've never had before. Even electricity, air conditioning, like, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, even if you were a king, you didn't have air conditioning. You had to have slaves wave things at your face. Uh, so, the stuff that even a poor person or a, um, an average person has access to is far beyond what kings and queens had just a couple of hundred years ago. So, because of this, and it also means that the safety in our environment has increased. So we are not threatened by tigers so much because there's not many, many left. Uh, dangerous animals are a less threat. Uh, war in general, depending where you live, is a less threat. 
uh, you know, there's so many things that we don't aren't threatened by anymore by the environment. But the but our life, humanity has changed so much that the biological system is still set on the old system because the biology tends to move quite slowly. So, what does all this mean for you? The first thing to really realize is that not to be too hard on yourself and to have compassion for others because we are wired to be full of stress and full of fear because it's trying to protect us. Essentially, the fear that we have, the, the worries that we accumulate is a form of protection. The second thing to realize, and this is what I work a lot with clients and what I've realized is that a major part of growth and going beyond that state, well, there's really a few parts, but I'll talk about one thing, is that a lot of the focus is on telling the body, the biology, the cells, the mind, that it's safe. If your body does not feel safe, if it's programmed in such a way, you, as soon as you're, if you're unsafe, certain parts of the brain, or most of the brain actually shuts down in order to preserve energy. So when we are running on an unsafe program, we are literally less intelligent, less intuitive, less psychic, less able to communicate our feelings, less able to process experiences. Basically, it stunts our growth in all areas of our lives. So the, one of the first parts of treatment or coming out of this is that you've got to keep reaffirming to the body and the cells and the brain, the biology, the neurology, that it's safe. It's safe to relax. It's safe to let go. And it's safe to heal. And only when that program has really started to get inside the system and started changing things, that this creates a healing response straight away. And then the person starts to activate higher functions, uh, such as what I mentioned before. Psychic abilities, intuition, intelligence, creativity, all this stuff can only exist in a safe biological environment. And that's the essence, and that's the core message, is that that's what needs to be focused on, is this element of safety needs to be encouraged. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is that why or how does the fear response, or how does the stress response continue to govern our system and our lives and our decision making? So what seems to happen is that whenever there's a potential threat, this is recorded from a very young, even unconscious, is that if there's a potential threat to our biology, the mind, the system, remembers it and stores it in the system as a potential threat. And that it does that in order so that, A, to pre prevent that situation from occurring again, and second, to be on alert if that situation was to present itself. So this program is set up and then what it does is it tends to be encoded into the subconscious mind. So we are picking up all these triggers as we grow up and in our life, any potential threat is recorded and then stored consciously maybe first, but most of this stuff is subconsciously. And as you know, referencing somebody else, Dr. Bruce Lipton, he would say that 95% of our behavior is run by subconscious mind or subconscious program. So again, even if we have the best intentions in the world, oh, I'm healing, I am, I'm going to be more communicative, I'm going to be more creative, I'm going to, I'm going to heal my body. But that's like 5%. And then, but as soon as something happens in the environment, it triggers a subconscious response, bam, biology goes out, brain switches off we become in stressed out response. So this is what most of us have going on. We've got a whole bundle, potentially thousands, maybe millions of threat responses and fear responses that are deep encoded into subconscious mind, which is running most of the program, and most of our behavior. And that's why we're self-destructive. That's why we fight. That's why we argue. That's why we hate each other, that's why we always constantly want to shoot each other and all that sort of stuff. So it's actually not, it's not you, that's, it's not the essence of you who's doing that. 
it's not the spirit, it's not the heart, it's not the essence of who you are that is reacting in violence, who's reacting in depression, who's reacting in anxiety. It's not the essence of who you are, it's the biological tendency of this body-mind system that we have been born into that has a bias towards those states. And when those states kind of get out of control and we don't know how to manage them because no one teaches us how to do that, then of course we're going to be a bundle of anxiety, we're going to be a bundle of depression, we're going to be a bundle of anger, we're going to be a bundle of violence. So again, it comes back to that first thing is that there's compassion there because there's a bias already in our system the second step being that we have to now teach ourselves that it's safe. We have to show the body, we have to show the mind, and there's, this is what I work with clients, I use tapping, energy psychology, because it gets into the subconscious mind. We start changing the biology. Which brings me to the last third point, is that because we have a biological tendency or a bias towards stress, it does require work and commitment in order to start shifting that tendency, to snap out of that tendency. So for example, the great saints, if you look at any of the great saints and sages, you know, they were very dedicated, very intense, probably very intense people. The Buddha sat apparently under the tree for 40 days and he vowed not to move until he had worked out the truth of it. And that was after many, many years of austerity, austere practices. If you look at any of these great people, they worked intensely to, which I believe is part of coming out of the biological tendency. So almost overriding the biology in such a way that it didn't govern us anymore and then we could be free of the biology or shift the biology so that it worked for us and not against us. And I think that's where we're at as humanity, is that that's the work and that's why it takes effort it's very easy to complain, it's easy to be negative, it's easy to be violent and angry because that's the setup, right? It's easy to be like that. But for a person to come out and to be mostly positive, like genuinely positive, uh, to be peaceful, genuinely peaceful, it does take a lot of work. It takes a lot of meditation. Traditionally, it's a lot of meditation. So that's what I believe, that's, that's the piece of the puzzle you know, that we have a tendency towards being stressed out and in order to come out of it, we have to teach ourselves that it's safe, teach the body it's safe so then it can finally relax and then once that's relaxed, we can then shift the biology so it doesn't work against us and we can actually activate our potential, activate healing and uh, be free of that limitation. So that's it. That's a lot of talking from me. Hopefully that's clicked some lights in and uh, those things. If you're interested in working with me more one-on-one, -on -one, check out my current offerings, website, all that sort of stuff, social media. I'm also going to be running trainings later on in the year, talking more about this stuff, how to do this stuff using energy psychology and such, and all that wonderful, all those wonderful things. So I look forward to it. If you've got any questions, comment somewhere around, and I'll see you next time.